the realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones foreshadowing video. In today's video, I actually want to talk about a couple different topics. As most of you know, every once in a while I like to make foreshadowing videos. What I like to do is try to figure out how Game of Thrones will come to an end. And sometimes you can find the answers by taking a look at some of the older scenes from previous seasons. There are clues throughout the entire show, you just have to know where to find them, so that's what I want to try to do today. I also want to talk about one of the quotes from the books because it could be foreshadowing something as well. Now I know Game of Thrones doesn't always follow the books, but we do know the producers did discuss the ending with the writer George R.R. R. Martin. According to them, they want to try to end the show in a similar fashion, so you never know what information from the books is still relevant or not. Obviously, they haven't been making everything up, because they told us some of the stuff in this show will eventually happen in the books too. Now let's take a look at the first scene I want to show you, because it may or may not be foreshadowing a big event in the final season. The scene I want to show you took place in the first season of the show, when Robert Baratheon is still the King of Westeros, and Ned Stark is the Hand to the King. This is when Robert Baratheon finds out Daenerys Targaryen is pregnant, and as we all know, Robert wanted her and her baby to die, but Ned Stark could not allow something like that to happen. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this scene is because of something Varys says to Ned. If you are one of my new subscribers, then you might not know this, but I actually think Varys will betray Daenerys next season. This is something I have made a video about before, but I never played that scene in the video. Because, quite honestly, I had forgotten what he said during that scene, otherwise I would have shown it as well. Now, just in case you did not see the original video, I will briefly tell you why I think that. That way you are not left completely in the dark. Whenever I make a theory video, I try to provide enough evidence for it to make sense. You can't really do that if you just show one scene or read one quote, otherwise it could just be seen as a coincidence. Especially when it comes to Varys betraying Daenerys because some people think he would never do this. However, in my opinion, it seems like they have been foreshadowing this for a very long time. Not to mention, Varys isn't a person you could really trust. Now, if you're wondering why Varys would do something like this, just take a listen to what he says, because he gave us the answer back in the first season. You, my counsel, counsel! Speak sense to this honorable fool! I understand your misgivings, my lord. Truly, I do. It is a terrible thing we must consider, a vile thing. Yet we who presume to rule must sometimes do vile things for the good of the realm. Should the gods grant Daenerys a son, the realm will be. As you can see, Varys said, sometimes you have to do vile things for the good of the realm. Now what makes this scene even more interesting is what he said right before it ended. He said if Daenerys Targaryen has a son, the realm will bleed. As we all know, Daenerys never ended up having that baby, but the crazy thing is, Daenerys might be pregnant as we speak, and that scene could come full circle. Now when it comes to his loyalty to Daenerys, this is where it gets kind of tricky, because we do know Varys was secretly trying to get the Targaryens back on the Iron Throne. There was whispers of this in the first season, but at that time, Varys was trying to get Viserys on the throne, not Daenerys. If you remember correctly, Varys was trying to help Robert kill Daenerys. If he truly wanted Daenerys to live, then he would have spoke up when Ned told Robert not to kill her, but he never did. Varys continued to allow this to happen. His Grace has had a change of heart concerning Daenerys Targaryen. Whatever arrangements you made, unmake them at once. I'm afraid those birds have flown. The girl is likely dead already. Now, of course, this was a very long time ago, so perhaps Varys no longer feels that way, but as I said before, it seems like the show continues to foreshadow a betrayal coming from Varys. His loyalty was put into question when Tyrion and Varys held a meeting with Kenvara. Now, keep this in mind, Kenvara actually has a higher position than Melisandre. Kenvara might know more about Varys than she does. In my opinion, Kenvara made it very clear. She knows things that only Varys would know. Should I tell you what the voice said? Should I tell you the name of the one who spoke? We serve the same queen. 
If you are her true friend, you have nothing to fear from me. Kenvara knows what the voice said from the flames, and she also knows that Varys cannot be trusted. Think about it like this. Kenvara did not say anything to Tyrion. She did not question Tyrion's loyalty. She only questioned Varys' loyalty. What she said to Varys was a threat, because she knows his intentions. In my opinion, this was foreshadowed again when Daenerys finally had the chance to confront him. Varys actually admitted to trying to have Daenerys killed. Now, Daenerys does forgive him, but she promises if he ever betrays her, she will have him burned alive. You sent word to Essos to murder Daenerys Targaryen? Your Grace, I did what had to be done to... to keep yourself alive. Lord Varys has proven himself a loyal servant. Proven himself loyal, quite the opposite. If he dislikes one monarch, he conspires to crown the next one. What kind of a servant is that? And I swear this, if you ever betray me, I'll burn you alive. The tension continues to build as we get closer to the end. Then, of course, the cherry is put on top when Varys speaks with Melisandre. Every time Varys speaks to a Red Priestess, he fears for his life. This is not a coincidence. Just like Melisandre said, Varys will die in Westeros next season. Oh, I will return, dear spider. One last time. My lady. I have to die in this strange country. Just like you. So now you have to ask yourself, how will Varys die? He will not die in battle because he's not a fighter. We've never seen him pick up a weapon, so there's no reason to think he would all of a sudden decide to want to help fight the White Walkers. Varys will end up doing some sneaky shit once again, but this time it will lead to his death. Everybody is interested in something. Not me. When I see what desire does to people, what it's done to this country, I am very glad to have no part in it. Besides, the absence of desire leaves one free to pursue other things, such as... Alright, now I want to shift gears and talk about something else. The next scene I want to show you takes place in Season 7 during a conversation between Tyrion Lannister and Daenerys Targaryen. In this video clip, Daenerys tells Tyrion why she actually likes him, but it's not exactly the answer Tyrion was looking for. Daenerys talks about heroes and how they're always getting themselves killed trying to one-up each other. She mentions Khal Drogo, Jorah Mormont, and Dario, but who she is really talking about is Jon Snow, because at that time he's on a mission to capture a white. Let's take a look at the scene. About you. I honestly don't. You're not a hero. Oh. I've been heroic on occasion. I once charged through the mudgate of King's Landing. I don't want you to be a hero. Heroes do stupid things and they die. Drogo, Jorah, Dario, even this. Jon Snow. They all try to outdo each other. As of right now, that quote isn't entirely true. Drogo did die, but Dario, Jorah, and Jon are still alive. But could that be foreshadowing a future event? I don't expect us to ever see Dario again, so let's just leave him out of the conversation for now. Could Daenerys Targaryen be right when it comes to Jorah Mormont and Jon Snow? I would say both of these men do love Daenerys Targaryen. Jorah Mormont was the first person to volunteer to go on the mission to capture a white, because he is willing to do just about anything for Daenerys at this point. He lives to serve her, and there may come another time when Jorah Mormont puts his own life on the line to keep Daenerys Targaryen safe. In fact, I think a lot of people expect Jorah Mormont to sacrifice himself for Daenerys next season. I know people believe that because I see them say it in my comment section all the time. But what about Jon Snow? Will he end up doing something stupid to get himself killed, like Daenerys said? This is something I like to talk about, especially when it has to do with characters like Jon, Daenerys, Cersei, Jaime, Tyrion, and a few others, because they are essentially the main characters of the show. Obviously, whatever happens to them matters, because it will have a very big impact on the end of the story. Now, when it comes to Jon Snow, I believe the chances of him getting himself killed when doing something heroic are higher than ever. Not only because it's the final season, not only because he has a closer relationship with Daenerys, but also because Daenerys might be pregnant with his child. If that is the case, Jon seems like the type of man that would want to protect his child no matter what, even if that means giving up his own life. But even if you take all those variables off the table, Jon still has a very good chance of getting himself killed regardless. 
John cannot avoid the bloodshed because he needs to lead the men into battle. John has been preparing for this day for a very long time, and the fact that he is who he is puts a very big target on his back. Cersei wants him dead, but the Night King also has his eyes on Jon Snow, so it doesn't really matter if Jon is fighting the Night King's army or fighting against Cersei's army. Jon has a bullseye painted on his back. So let's just say, I will not be surprised if Daenerys is right about Jorah Mormont or Jon Snow. Alright, now let's take a look at one more thing. This time, I want to take a look at one of the quotes from the books. The reason why I want to talk about this is because it actually goes against a very popular theory. In fact, it actually goes against one of my own theories. For those of you that have seen most of my videos, you would know I think there is a very good chance that Arya Stark and Gendry could end up together in the end. The first time I talked about this was roughly two years ago, and I think I have talked about it in a few other videos since. But the quote I want to show you today could actually foreshadow someone else ending up with Gendry instead. In one of Jaime Lannister's chapters in A Dance with Dragons, he's talking about both of the Stark daughters. At this time in the books, some people believe Arya Stark is actually in the North, but as we all know, she is still in Essos. You see, in the books, Ramsay Bolton never marries Sansa Stark. He actually marries her friend, who goes by the name of Jane Poole. But when Ramsay marries her, they're trying to disguise her as Arya Stark. That way, the Boltons have a stronger claim in the North. They dress Jane up in some Stark clothing, and they start to call her Arya. And the rumors of Arya Stark getting married to Ramsay start to spread throughout Westeros. In this chapter, Jaime mentions Arya getting married, but he also thinks about Sansa. He is hoping Brienne can find her and keep her safe, and he even hopes that one day she can get married too. The interesting thing is, Jaime thinks about what type of man Sansa can marry. Take a look at the quote, and let me know if you think it has any meaning to it. Lord Eddard's daughters live. One has just been wed. The other? Brienne, where are you? Have you found her? If the gods are good, she'll forget she was a Stark. She'll wed some burly blacksmith or fat-faced innkeep. Fill up his house with children, and never need to fear that some knight might come along to smash their heads against a wall. Now this could just be a random thought Jamie had, or maybe it could come true. We know from the beginning of the story, Robert Baratheon always wanted to join his house with Ned Stark. Robert was never able to do this by getting married to Lyanna Stark, but he later hoped that Sansa could marry his son, Joffrey. But we all know how that turned out. However, there is still another opportunity for this to happen, through his bastard son, Gendry. If this were to happen, I think most of us believe Arya would be the one to marry Gendry because of their close relationship with one another. But some people also think that Arya would never settle down and get married because this is something that she told her father. Now, I'm not sure if Sansa would ever want to get married again because she's had nothing but bad experiences with marriage. But we all know Gendry is nothing like Joffrey or Ramsay. Sansa and Gendry have never met, but they are closer to the same age, and they will meet next season when Gendry arrives in Winterfell to make weapons. So let me know if you think Jaime could be right. Could Sansa be the one to end up with the blacksmith instead? Robert thought he would join houses with Ned by having Sansa marry his son. Maybe he was right the whole time, only he had the wrong son in mind. We were meant to rule together. If your sister had lived, we'd have been bound by blood. Well, it's not too late. I have a son, you have a daughter. We'll join our houses. Put your thoughts or questions down below. I would like to see what you think. I know it's just one simple quote, but you never know. Anyways, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch today's video. I appreciate that as always, and I also want to thank those of you who support the channel on Patreon. I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.